Hello everybody, Malcolm Sondrag here with another unboxing. I'm not just going to do unboxings, okay, there's other things I'd like to do, it's just a bit easier, you know. So today I'm here to talk to you all about Fallen Frontiers. Now, Fallen Frontiers was a science fiction miniature game, uh, again on Kickstarter. Uh, it was done by a company called Scale 75, who previously have just done, you know, 75 mil figures, so that's like three inches, right? So, you know, massive stuff. Um, so they do like, uh, you know, very high quality display pieces that you'd like put on a shelf and paint up. Uh, maybe use as a giant in one of your games, you know. And uh, then a while back they did, uh, oh, is it Jewel Fighters? Yeah, which was... Um, uh, large-scale one-on-one combat uh, skirmish game and uh, you know in that they included a couple of like 30 35 mil figures as little bonuses and those were nice and now you know 35 mil science fiction skirmish so this actually caused a bit of a fuss because some people uh, were like hey you know how are you gonna you know, 35 millimeters, that's too big. And, uh, it, you know, for people who are used to playing with 25s, yeah. But you need to remember that most 25 millimeter miniatures are actually about 28 millimeters tall because for some crazy reason they measure to the eyes instead of the top of the head. I'm not sure why. Um, uh, and then a, a lot of figures that are described as 28 are actually 32. Uh, <coughs> yeah, especially the heroic 28 miles millimeter scale, where they have like bigger hands and heads and feet, so you can see them better and stuff like that. But anyway, so yeah, the figures are a little bit on a large side. I might do a separate video about them at some point in time. But for now, you know, I thought, hey, why not support these fine people? They've delivered well on a project before, and. Uh, you know, I waited and I waited and I waited. The usual thing on Kickstarter, it was delayed and late, but eventually stuff came out and it's here. Um, I did get a few extra models beyond what's in the base box and um, I've removed them from the box so that you'll just be seeing, you know, core box stuff. Um, right, because I backed the Kickstarter, is there anything different? Yes. Uh, you know, at the bottom of the box it says backer limited edition. That's the only difference, as far as I can tell. Um, there might be a couple of alternate sculpts in there as well for a couple of the heroes. So, Fallen Frontiers, science fiction skirmish game. Um, looks like you'd be playing about 40, 50 models a side, roughly. Um, I don't normally cover sci-fi stuff. Uh, you know, fantasy and historical appeals more to me, but hey, you know, I had a look on the internet, see if I could find any unboxing videos or reviews or anything, and um, I think there was like one in Spanish, so I thought, why not do something for the English players as well, right? Ah. <sighs> so we got our four factions here on the front of the box, which hopefully you can see. Uh, we got the Rifts, they're basically like your Orcs, they, they like to charge forwards, attack people. Also, I noticed that their defence and morale gets higher when they're pinned down, so actually they're kind of stubborn and tenacious. They're like your close combat guys, they like to rush in and kill stuff. You've got the Ares, who look like human but they're not, they're like a biomechanically engineered race um, of super freaks. Uh, they're basically like space marines to be honest. Uh, from what I can tell, except rather than being like the totalitarian regime of evil that Space Marines are, the Ares are freedom fighters uh, of a sort, and we'll get to that because of the next faction, we have the Sakes. Now the Sakes are the humans, they're very similar to Imperial Guard, um, but they're like the corporate evil machine that likes to grind out, um, you know, opposition. Uh, essentially, when the Sakes first got in touch with an alien race, it was the Ares. So they went, oh, you're aliens. We're going to take you and put you in our facilities and run, um, you know, scientific tests on you. And then, you know, the Ares got fed up of being lab rats. Some of them died and they said, hey, you know, we're getting out of here, right? And so they're off doing their own thing now. And then we have the Harvesters, who are kind of like undead stroke gene stealers, stroke craziness. 
um, or like Cricks, if you're familiar with War Machine and Hordes. I mean, yeah, you could you could say like um, Troll Bloods, um, kind of. Interesting enough, I'd actually say the the Ares are a bit more like Cador because of the the highly specialized nature. Where, oh no 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 no, because Cador has all the cheap grunts and drones, and Signar is for more. Yeah, but, and then uh, Cricks for the yeah. So that's that's totally crazy, right? Um, so let's have a look inside the box and see what you get. Well, first off, the box lid is a bit of a tight fit, and you'll see there's a bit of damage on the corner of the box lid there. That happened in the post. Um, right, on the edges of the box lid, we have, I don't know, well, you can see this, we have, we have rifts, we have sakes, we have harvesters, and we have Aries. So we have all four factions around the edge of the box. Right. Uh, inside the box, nice bit of bubble wrap. Everyone likes bubble wrap. Well, almost everyone. I know a load of people like to pop the bubble wrap. I don't, because then you can't use it again. So I'm not going to scrunch it all up and go, oh, what fun I'm having with strange ASMR noises or whatever. I'm just going to pop it in there in the lid. Right, in the box we have a number of things. Um, a few resin bases that I'm not using. Uh, because there's, there's, you only get two factions in a box, and I went for the Ares and the um, Rifts. And these bases are perfect sizes for the Harvesters or the Sakes, but for the Ares and the Rifts, hey, you know, bases are a bit too small. So obviously we have miniatures. Miniatures in lovely little bags. Uh, this would be the Ares, this would be the Rifts, and as you can see they are color-coded, right? So they're colored by faction. Um, the Rifts get this kind of jade lapis lazuli shade. The Ares get this kind of light gray. The um, the outcasts, that's mercenaries, get a kind of dark gray. The Sakes get a kind of uh, a turquoisey, bluey green color. And I don't know what color the Harvesters came out in. But let's take a look at these for a moment, right? I may have to do a separate video on the miniatures. Um, so everything's in little bags. Right, so here's a unit of Ares guys, um, troopers. We've got bases in here, we've got stat cards. Uh, the cards are important in this game. Uh, and we have like individual miniatures. Now, looking at them, they are very well cast. Um, with the few that I've assembled so far, and don't worry, I didn't assemble anything from a base game, I only assembled the extra miniatures that I got. But with the few that I assembled so far, the um, you know it's, there's been very little, you know, very few holes to fill. I mean, I, I, what I've glued together four or five of them, and I've only had to fill in like four holes, and they were all on the same figure actually. Um, and yeah, you could very easily not fill most of the holes. Oh wait, no six because there were two on the back of those guns. But anyway. Um, so let's let's set the miniatures aside for a moment. We have some dice and a tape measure. And here's something I like about this tape measure, right? Um, it's actually like a fabric tape measure. Um, you know, almost like you get in an old sewing kit. It's not the kind of rigid, stiff, metallic things that don't bend very well that you get in most normal tape measures. So I like that. Um, that's interesting. You let, lets you measure curvy lines and distances, which you might need to do in a game like this. Uh, next up, we have just a little thing saying, you know, this is game box number one hundred seventeen of five hundred. Um, yeah, that's for five hundred for the, the Kickstarter backers. After that, they just want that little slip of paper in. That's all, and it won't say um, you know, Kickstarter exclusive edition on the box or whatever. It'll just be, um, you know, totally fine. Oh, speaking of the box, uh, around the edge of the box here, uh, let's see, roofs, sakes. So we have the Ares heroes, we have their artwork, their concept artwork, their portraits. We have the artwork for the riffs, artwork for the um, sakes, and artwork for the harvesters. Now, this is nice, right, because 
you don't just have a blank side on a box. They, you know, they, they filled the box, the edges of the box with something. They put a bit of artwork on there. It gives you something to look at. And also it's a reference point. I mean, hey, if, if you're looking for colour schemes, you can go, oh, I, I want to paint, say, that guy. You say, oh, well, those colours look nice. I might want to mix it up a bit, change a few. But, you know, it's it's there as a reference, right? And it's also advertising for the company. You know, it's, yeah, no space is wasted, essentially. So, next up we have these four art cut five art cards, I think. Um, so we have Riffs again, um, Harvesters, Sakes, Aries. Oh, I'm back to the Riffs, just the four then. Okay, that's cool. Um, so that again highlights each of the four factions. Um, you know, gives you something to look at, a reminder of what's what. Um, and we have a rule book. Now, I have taken the time to read the rule book, and uh, it's it's quite well done. Uh, nice, plain, simple rules. Um, lots of beautiful pictures. Of course, I'm going to like turn to a load of pages with no pictures on. Oh no, there's some. There's some. You know, you get uh, a double page spread for each of the factions, a page of artwork, a page of writing, and then you get onto the rules themselves. Um, you got examples, you know, um, it's, a, it's a good read. Um, there's a couple of minor translation issues, uh, because this was originally written in Spanish, um, where you'll have to think a bit to work out what they mean. Uh, for instance, certain special rules will say when, when taking damage from an enemy unit, ignore the lesser strength hit. Which I assume means ignore the lowest strength hit. Uh, so like if you have a unit of guys with regular weapons and one guy with a heavy weapon that hits a lot harder, do I ignore all the um, all, all the lower damage or, or or just one of the lowest damage hits or what? You know, there's, there's a few things that need a bit of clarification, but I'm sure that'll be sorted out in a few months' time. Um, and then at the back, there's, uh, you know, reference sheets. However, of course, if you're familiar with War Machine and Hordes or Malifaux or anything like that, um, every unit comes with stack cards, right? So if you need to know, you know, how good you guys are at fighting or how brave they are or anything, uh, it'll be right there on the card. Um, for units, you have a uh, training factor, which is how hard you are to hit and your morale. You have armor, um, how hard your guns hit, your range on your guns, your close combat attack, your close combat defense. And then if unit, and this actually, this next bit actually comes on from the uh, Dual Fighters 75 mil fantasy skirmish game they did. But you know, getting badly injured, you just flip the card over. Oh look, they're pinned down now, and you get a slightly different profile. Um, so that's fun, you know. Most people are worse when they're pinned down. Uh, with some of the Rifts units, they actually get better when they're pinned down. Because they're like, no, no, we're Rifts. You will not take us out alive. You know. Um, so there's also other cards, right? And here's where the fun part comes in. Because uh, you, have, you have your stack cards for your units. And um, heroes and heavy weapons and stuff like that. They don't add to a unit, they replace a unit member. So, you know, you might look at a hero and say, oh, that's a, a little bit cheap, I'm not paying very many points for that guy. But when you realise, actually, you know what, he's he's a, he's an upgrade to an existing unit member, so this unit of five guys, and a hero is still five guys, it's just four guys and a hero now, right? Um, so, yeah. Um... What was I? Oh yeah. So you also have a deck of cards, which um, you can you construct before the game. You can have no more than two of each kind of hard card, similar to Hearthstone, really, or something like that. Um, and these are your your orders, your special moves, your tactical things, and they're great, right? Uh, because they kind of liven up the gameplay a bit. Except you pay for them with victory points, right? So. The whole game is about this uh, resource called Criffium, which uh, all of these races want. Uh, it's their kind of 
kryptonite power source, whatever it is, you know. Um, and so you'll have containers of cryptium or like, you know, cryptium refineries and stuff around the battlefield. And they'll be running around going, oh, we're going to grab some cryptium this turn. And it's like, great. How do you work out who's won at the end of the game? Oh, whoever's got the most cryptium at the end of the game has won. Except that to play cards and use special powers costs you cryptium, right? So you're kind of sitting here going, this is a really great card here. I could use it to swing the game this turn, but is it going to get me more Cryphium on the following turns? Is it worth the price I'm going to have to pay for it? So you're not just going to be spamming cards out every turn. Rather, you're going to be thinking, OK, I need to think about this tactically. You know, how much can I afford to give away here and what am I going to get back for it? So it's like an investment, right? Oh, and then finally in the box, we have these lovely sheets of cardboard. Um, so a lot of people said scale 75 games, you know, hey guys, uh, it's 35 mil miniatures, you know, 35, 40 mil miniatures, nobody's doing sci-fi scenery that big. And they were like, okay, cool, we'll put some in the box, you know, some cardboard stuff. So um, all of these are double-sided. So from what I understand, this will make a big oblong, like, shipping crate container thing. Um, that could be like a, a Crufium refinery thing or just a great big plain packing crate. Um, we have some enough, you know, some smaller crates and some barriers. The smaller crates can also be Crufium containers. Uh, now, this this sheet is like ever so ever so slightly misaligned. The cutting on the on the hole punching for these bits. So if I just pop this one out, um, there'll be some little white bits on the edge there and it, you know, it's slightly misaligned. But hopefully, you know, because all of these things have a bottom, it might be possible to hide that a little bit. Or maybe I'll contact the guys and say, hey, you know, this is a bit of an issue here. Not a massive one, you know, it doesn't render the game completely unplayable in any way, shape or form. And then here we have tokens. We've got like a grenade cat token. Um, these are like first player, second player. Those are for if you guys moved fast. Uh, shield tokens, Crifium tokens. Uh, I think these are. I think those might. Oh, yeah, these are for if you've gone yet or not. And that's a, a like counter thing to keep track of your Crifium on and stuff like that. And these are all, of course, double sided. Oh, look! These can also be bleed tokens, those are command tokens. Yeah, I knew they were command tokens. Okay, so um, that's pretty much everything in the box. So what I'm going to do now is put these things back in the box and get out the figures that I have assembled, slap them on top of the box, and hopefully they'll be in focus. Uh, you know, my, like, the entire video could be out of focus and that would be a real shame. But hey, let's, uh, let's do what we can, okay? Because, uh, yeah, why not show off a few of these fine figures? So there's our, our lovely box top again. And uh, here we have a few. As I said, probably do a separate video on these at some point in the near future you know, close up with the little camera and uh, let you guys all have a look at them. So, uh, here we have a uh, Sakes officer, an Ares officer, uh, outcast, just a mercenary who's technically an Ares, but she kind of does what she wants, and another Sakes officer. Um, I like this guy. He's got a big hammer and he's got a shield, which is basically a ship's door. Um, he was in a vehicle that crashed. You know, it was shot down, crash landed in the middle of a battlefield. His men were getting shot up, so he just ripped a door off its hinges and used it as a shield to protect his guys. And he's, you know, he got like promoted, and he kept the door because the, the Ares are a bit like that. They're a bit kind of uh, eccentric, you know. So he keeps the door, and then they retrofitted it, trimmed it down, you know, padded the back of it, you know, turned it into a shield for him to protect his guys with, so now he keeps on doing that. Um, so yeah, these are probably all way out of focus, unfortunately. I um, don't know if I should hold a few of them up to the camera. Uh, maybe that'll help a little. Maybe not. Uh, 
yeah, probably going to do a separate video on these. Anyway, uh, I hope you liked this little video of mine. Um, yeah, I know I haven't put anything up in a while. I've been busy. Life's been kind of nasty, you know. But anyway, yeah, hope you liked it. If you do, there's a nice little big thumbs up bottom at the top of the video. If you didn't, hey, there's a thumbs down one, you know. Um, and just, you know, if, if you liked this, why not show it to some of your mates who might be interested in the game as well, you know? Uh, okay, that's enough from me. I'll say bye-bye from now, and see you all next time. Bye-bye.